Imagine Jack and Jill decide to rob a store. Unbeknownst to Jack, Jill brings a gun, and when confronted by the store's owner, she shoots and kills him. Can Jack be liable for murder even though he didn't intend to injure anyone? In People vs. Cavett, we explore the felony murder rule as a means of imposing murder liability on co-felons. Teenagers James Cavett and Robert Williams hatched a plan with Mianta McKnight, Cavett's girlfriend, to rob the McKnight family home. Pursuant to the plan, one evening, Cavett and Williams entered the house with Mianta's assistance and restrained Betty McKnight, Mianta's stepmother, punching her multiple times as they placed a sheet over her head and bound her wrists and ankles. They then gathered various valuable items before consensually binding Mianta to mask her involvement. When the pair left, Betty was face down on her bed, still bound and struggling to breathe normally. Mianta untied herself and called for help. When the police arrived, Betty had died from asphyxiation. In separate trials, Cavett and Williams faced charges for felony murder, with the prosecution arguing that they were strictly liable because Betty's death occurred in the perpetration of the robbery burglary. Cavett and Williams argued that Mianta killed Betty after they left because of personal animosity and that liability wasn't appropriate because the killing didn't facilitate the robbery burglary. The trial judges rejected their requests for jury instructions that felony murder liability only applied if a killing advanced the underlying felony. Cavett and Williams were both convicted. In a consolidated appeal, the Court of Appeal affirmed. Cavett and Williams appealed to the California Supreme Court. 